When I was a little girl, I grew up at 48th and Larchwood in West Philadelphia, and the Solari Index was 100%. The Solari Index is the index that I use to describe the well-being of a neighborhood. It's the percent of people in a neighborhood who believe that a child can leave their home, go to the nearest place to buy a popsicle, and come home alone safely. It was unthinkable that a child wasn't safe at 48th and Larchwood in West Philadelphia in the 1950s. The Solari Index was 100%, and the Dow Jones Index was probably about 500. Today, it's reversed. The Dow Jones Index is very high at about 10,000, and the Solari Index is at very low in West Philadelphia and very low throughout the United States. And why is that? It's because one of the ways that we've financed the growth of multinational corporations and big banks and the rise of the Dow Jones is by selling narcotics to our children. It's one of the most profitable businesses in America. About a year ago, I gave a speech called How the Money Works on Organized Crime to a wonderful group of people in Philadelphia. Uh, they have a conference every year. They go off into the woods for about three days and talk about how they can help our culture, our world spiritually evolve. So I gave my presentation on how the money works as organized crime, describing what is arguably the biggest, most profitable industry in the United States today. And at, towards the end, we were discussing the fact that the Department of Justice estimates that the United States is the leader in laundering organized crime profits of about $500 billion to a $1 trillion a year. So I asked the audience, what would happen if we stopped being the worldwide leader in laundering $500 billion to a $1 trillion a year? And... Uh, they said, well, you know, if we stopped, our mutual funds would go down in price. The stock market would crash. I said, well, what else would happen? So they said, well, you know, uh, we might have trouble financing the government deficit because, in fact, the people who control 50 years of accumulated profits, that's a lot of capital that we need to finance our deficit. So I said, okay, uh, well, I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a, let's pretend there's a big red button right uh, up here in the lectern right in front of me and if you push that button, you can stop all organized crime in America, and you can stop America laundering $500 billion to a trillion dollars of organized crime profits every year. Who here will push the button? And out of 100 people, only one person would push the button. And I said, okay, so what you're saying is you want a whole armada of people to sell drugs to your children and grandchildren to keep your mutual funds up and your government checks coming? And they said, yes, that's right. Now, there are many ways to change that. There are many ways to re-engineer our financial system and our resources so that the Solari Index and the Dow Jones can be friends, so that when we get the Solari Index to go up by making sure our neighborhoods are safe for children, the real estate can go up in value, the small businesses go up in value. There are many ways to make the Solari Index and the Dow Jones friends. But before we can do that, before we can have that conversation, we have to face what's happening. We have to face that we are addicted to drug profits, because if we can't face it, God can't fix it. Okay. This is a copy of the cover sheet of the report. It's on the World Wide Web. If you want to go search for it, you can just look for uh, the report on correspondent banking. Okay, and that's a, that's a copy of the report. It's an incredible read. What they don't tell you in there, of course, is that the U.S. economy is dependent upon that drug money, among other things. Now let's go a little further. <laughs> Gotta love this. If this gentleman down here in the black jacket walks into a bank with a deposit of $10,001, does so everybody understand that the bank has to fill out a report and send it to the U.S. Treasury indicating that he might be a money launderer? But did you happen to know that under U.S. laws, there are certain classes of business that are exempt from making currency transaction reports? Included in those are a bank, obviously, a department or agency of the U.S. government. CIA does not have to fill out currency transaction reports. An entity established under the laws of any state, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you come down to this one. A listed entity other than a bank whose common or analogous equity interests are listed on the New York Stock Exchange or American Stock Exchange or designated as a NASDAQ national market security. If you have a company 
that trades on Wall Street, you can launder all the money you want to. It's legal. Gee. Now, I'm just laying a little groundwork here for you before we get to September 11th. We're getting there. Just last year, a group of companies were called in to meet with Janet Reno, who's not probably the most ethical person that ever lived, and Secretary of State Stewart, uh, excuse me, uh, uh, Deputy Treasury Secretary Stewart Eisenstadt. And these companies, Hewlett Packard, Ford, Sony, General Motors, Whirlpool, General Electric, and Philip Morris, were called in to the Department of Justice for the amount of drug money they were laundering. <laughs> Basically, the message was, you guys, cool it. Okay? It's getting, like, out of hand. Now, let me uh, ask a question. This gentleman r right here, what's your name? Kevin. Kevin. Kevin is a drug lord. Kevin is the, is, is the king of all drugs in South America. Okay? All right. Uh, and let's say uh, the, this young lady right down here with the glasses. What's your name? Rhonda. Rhonda is the executive vice president of General Motors for the Southern Hemisphere or South America. Okay? Kevin, you call up Rhonda one day and you say, I'd like a hundred Chevy Suburbans armor plated custom built at $30,000 each and I'll pay cash. Rhonda, what are you going to say to that offer? All right. All right. Now, Kevin's got money that he can't spend because it's drug money. But now he's got 100 Chevy Suburbans. But let's say now that... Um, ah, the gentleman with his hand on his chin right there. Yeah, right there. What's your name? No, no, you. What's your name? Brian. Brian is Jack Welch, the chairman of General Electric. Okay? Now, Kevin, you're really good. Okay? You got $200 million that you got to move. Okay? So you call up Jack Welch's assistant, special accounts assistant. You say, I'd like to open in South America Kevin's Appliances. I'd like to buy $200 million of everything GE has because I'm going to open this appliance store and I'll pay you cash. Now, Jack Welch at GE, what do you say? Right on. Let's let's do this deal. Now, by the way, who owns NBC? General Electric, MSNBC, CNBC, all the NBCs. Okay. Now let's just take a look at that for one quick second. Very quickly, a price to earnings ratio, P to E, market capitalization. It's very simple. If you have a company that has 10,000 shares, and each share sells for ten dollars. 